OTB's The Hurling Pod. With Board Gosh Energy, proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship. That's rude. It's all. Alright, I've done rapper. Yeah. Yeah. It's the moment where Skell tries to check out everyone who's in the crowd. It's like, well, so who's actually made the trip from Galway to be here? Oh, it's, it's the like person you go to check. always one thing that I will say. If, uh, whenever I'm at a game, there's always one person I can hear is my mother. Yes. But the second I walked out, I say, she's, she's over to I my left. I can see her there. there I can go. see her right over there. <laughs> Hand on her head. That's the <laughs> guy is. What's he going to say? <laughs> uh, for regular listeners of the pod, how much is in the swear jar with Mammy Skell now at this point? Let's just say she got a two-week holiday over there two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome along. It is the Hurling Pod Live. It is brought to you off the ball here with thanks to Board Gosh Energy. They've given us this magnificent theater for the evening. You are all supporting two fantastic charities by being here as well. The Dylan Quirk Foundation, which is very close to all of our hearts, we want to support, and Focus Ireland, who are the assigned charity for Board Gosh Energy this year. As you saw in the video just before we came out, BG, one of the sponsors of the All-Ireland Championship, their message very much is that hurling, it's anyone's game. They are promoting inclusivity in hurling. So we are here, week of the All-Ireland final, lads. Slightly different to Zoom in the kitchen over the last two years. Yeah. Here we are in a theatre, re- relatively packed, friends and family here, and you don't give a shit what's the way the stories are going to go. Uh, well, I don't think so. We, we got a lot of guidance, actually, to be fair, the last yeah. while on the amount of, well, swears for him, really, is what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah in stories. Five to I, ten. I'm not that bad. Like. No, but I think, to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> I think, to be fair, the nerves were about six weeks ago. We were talking about it there when we were told we're coming to the board, gosh. I think that's where the nerves were. We were saying that's a bit big now, but... It's unbelievable to see the amount of people that are here this evening, so it's, it's incredible. But two great causes as well, in fairness yeah, to it, yeah. So. Look, both of you, scale of hurled in front of 82,000 people at Crow Park. This isn't a big <laughs> deal for nerves. <laughs> well, I, uh, as soon as I heard it was going to be on here, the first thing I did was Google capacity. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I re- entered in the wrong theatre. There must be some other BGE theatre in like London, and I saw 22,000. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that. But anyways, I found the right one, and it was 2,100, so I said, ah, if we get half it, it's a huge success. But then when the, when the charities came along, it just, uh, I, I kind of knew it would get good traction because there'd be generous people, and, and, and here we are. Yeah, oh, magnificent, especially yeah. for you all to come along on a Thursday night. We know midweek in Dublin is tricky, particularly for, like we heard this year before we came out, how many people are actually here from Limerick? <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Lights. I can't. I, uh, I can hear, but straight away, I'm hoping they are on scale team in the competition for the All Ireland tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong number. Right. Okay. Where is she? Uh, I have my fans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have a fantastic lineup tonight as well. We totted up the numbers 21 All Stars backstage before we started. Scale, you and I have contributed nothing to that number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have more All Irelands than you. You do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul Murphy's got four, which is not bad. I believe Tommy Walsh is sitting somewhere out there with nine. I think there's only one man who's got more than him. Mm-hmm. And Joe Canning, you know, the small matter of being hurler of the year, five All-Stars. And Kieran Carey is here, Limerick legend, one of the best players. <laughs> to play for a Limerick team who got so close but didn't get over the line. And he's got three All-Stars to contribute as well. So, fantastic to be here. Will we grab a seat? Because it yep. might seem kind of weird if we're standing up all night. Yep. Um, we will be ringing out Joe Canning in a few minutes, but... The two lads to give us an insight. We'll talk about the game a lot more with the lads when they come out a bit later on. But tell us about All-Ireland Week and what it's like, Paul, when you're getting ready. Um, look, I suppose different years, if you're lucky to play in, in, in a few. Like when you're young, you're just naive. You just think, you know, the, 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 you just want to play the match. The, it comes in very quickly. Um, I remember my first one just sleeping the whole night through, no nerves whatsoever and going and playing it. But then I suppose, look, maybe as you get older, um, you realise the bit of pressure that might be on you. You realise that, you know, you could be losing on Sunday. You could be feeling bad for the week. So there's there, there's different there's different weeks that happen. But look, from the Kilkenny point of view, that I'm sure the lads are refreshed. They're delighted coming in here now. Like I mean, if you took at the start of the year to say that we were going to be in a final, we'd, we'd take your hand off. And look, the Limerick lads are well grounded. They've been here many times. And look, their feet don't seem to be coming off the ground. So I think all players this week now, will, you know, especially with Kilkenny playing last year, there's no real new guys stepping in. 
easy or difficult thing to come in to a team who'd been so successful at the time you come in? Uh, easy for me. Like, um, I felt I came in, I watched the lads go for the four in a row, part of their training panel, and uh, for me it was like, you know, I stepped in behind Tommy there and right corner back. I remember the first All-Ireland was there and Tommy was in front of me, Noel Hickey was to the left of me and you had JJ and the lads. And I was saying, I'm pretty much the luckiest supporter in Kilkenny here that gets to play the game. Like, that was the way I looked at it. But um, look, there was no pressure. The boys were great. The boys just put the arm around you and say, listen, you're, you're here on merits and you didn't get in there unless you were, you know, playing well. So, look, I was just delighted to be there after dropped two or three times from Kilkenny. So, you, you know, you had the hard yards to make as well. But um, look, it was just great. I think, like, you know, Skettle would say the same in the boys. I think when you get to an All-Ireland final, as a player, for years you think you might never get there. So when you get there, it's just brilliant. Hmm. Simplistic preparation for you. Uh, forgive anyone who listened to the pod two weeks ago, but I have to ask Gail again about his preparations for 2012. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So basically, I, uh, I like to be active. So I, I, can't, I can't stand sitting around just doing nothing because my head gets into my own head, if you know what I mean, right? So I said I'd be, um, I, I would do a prudent action and go down to the bog load the turf and leave it there because th there was a bridge between the banks that was kind of a bit sketchy. So I thought if I chanced it, it'd collapse, I'd be there after the night. So I, I went home and my uncle, uh, you, you don't know him, but he's the type of uncle that immigrated in the 60s, comes back, thinks the Irish could do nothing right, <laughs> you know, and that he knows everything. So he said, come down, we would fix the bridge, we get the turf out and you can enjoy your weekend. So I listened and then when I saw him load the trailer with a bale of fucking straw, right, and a couple of bits of four by two, I should have known. I should have known, but I, I went along with it and we chanced it. And I'll never forget, as we're coming out, he does the most American phrase. He goes, punch it. This, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I put down and trailer <laughs> over. I was probably three or four hours there, so vexed. And it wasn't even my turf. <laughs> <laughs> it was my mother's turf. <laughs> so I just left in a fit of vexation at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, fell into bed, woke up, fell asleep on the bus going to the match. Uh, I, was telling, I didn't tell the story at the, managed at the table for breakfast because Anthony Cunningham was there. I thought he'd drop me. But then I went out and had a good game. <laughs> so, uh, in interval of the draw, these guys kind of spoiled it, but alas. Mm. So, knee deep, knee deep in bog water is the key then? Knee deep in bog water, yeah. Because my wife, we've been together probably four or five years at that stage. I asked her to go and get the chains, uh, these big heavy duty chains now. Like, she's a small five foot five thing, she's little. You know, and 10 minutes passed, 20 minutes passed, 30. I ring her, where the fuck are the chains? <laughs> like, <laughs> She, she couldn't put them into the boat, like. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get my sister, two sisters, to come down. And then I didn't even thank them. I just caught the chains and started pulling with them. But it's just, yeah, it's one of those things when you look back now from a position of maturity, and you say to yourself, what was I doing? What was I at? You know? Because if I, I'm, in, I'm in management now to a degree, you know, with, with, with kids. And, like, that is the last thing I'd say for them to do, you know. <laughs> but let's just say I'm getting older and wiser. Um, Paul... You met Skell for pretty much the first time outside the pitch last year. Mm. It was only literally as we were coming down here, the American side just reminded me of the guy you bumped into in the bar, the very nice American man oh, yeah. who was trying to enjoy his holiday in Limerick yeah. until Skell ruined the entire trip for him. <laughs> yeah, like, so we did our first road show. I'd say it was probably actually the first time we met in person, really, because we started it by Zoom, but um, we... We checked in at the same time. We did it in Dolan's in Limerick last year. We checked in at the same time. And uh, sure, two of us were like, here, we go down for a pint. And there was actually this small bar on the floor we were on. So we went down to it, and there was only one other guy from Chicago on it. And he was kind of sitting there on his own having a drink. And um, we just kind of include him in the conversation. And Scale goes, uh, how are you getting on? Where are you from? And your man goes, oh, I'm from Chicago. And sure, Scale straight away was like, oh, geez, that's a great sport town. You have the Chicago Bulls. You have the Cubs. Yeah, and he was rattling off. Your man was like, I'm, I'm not really into uh not really into sport, to be honest. And this guy was like, well, what are you into then? <laughs> I, I was kind of looking at this fella, and I was kind of looking at him going, like, trying to f Where going re this? read his vibes. I was like, where is he going? And he goes, well, what are you into then? Your man's like, well, I'm kind of into robot wars. <laughs> and you could just see, there's just this, this guy just never broke his stare with him. He's looking at me, he goes, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, right, come on, we're done. <laughs> so straight away, I was like, right, because a few times during the pod there, you could just see that blank glazed look coming on scale. I'm like, robot wars, that's what this is now. <laughs> and actually, it was the Father Ted thing. When he was, that was when I could see the, oh. So when you don't know something, it's like, bang, I go, I go frozen. Blank. I go blank, yeah. Yeah, control or delete. I thought it was the Wi-Fi originally. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> we have a confession to make as well. We had planned to watch a Father Ted episode, and then we kind of got lost for time. So we will watch it at half time, and you can report back in speed three for the second half. For anyone who's not familiar, James Gell, I think, is the only person in Ireland who managed to bypass Simpsons <laughs> and Father Ted 
despite the fact that Father Ted and the Simpsons was impossible to miss as a kid? I, I don't know. Like, I, what was going on? But like, back, back, You're right. back in that Chains day, in I, the ball. I have to ask her because why weren't we watching it? <laughs> the father now. Here, the father's the hand over the face now. So we're flat, we're some other two minutes ago. We were flat out working. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> But like, I, I, Monday that was at nine o'clock. Like nine o'clock of a Monday evening. No, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I said some things in the podcast show with you, right? And they've been questioning the things, but I've never got as much abuse about fucking Father Ted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I committed crimes against the nation. <laughs> so I will watch. I commit to watch it. Uh, I'm not getting my hopes up too much because you guys have built it up since the best things is sliced bread. Mm. <laughs> so I watch it and I report back. I like that you escaped Davy Fitzsire and Tipperary supporters to the best part, but Father Ted just will piss people off. Yeah. Amazing, like, isn't it? Maybe because people agreed with me about David Fitz and Tip. That was only Tip lads in, actually. Uh, more to follow. Sure. Uh, I assume there's nobody here from Tipperary given their early exit from the championship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. Yeah. Mm. Um, I reckon I know why you didn't see Father Ted. You spent your teenage years being a miscreant. That's why. Mm, yeah. Like, so, no, okay. we have to give the, is this? Well, I have to give the context. Yeah, this. the context, um, no, before we say You're it. not a Garda, or have never been a member of Angarda Siakana. No, is there any Garda here? today. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my sister-in-law's over there, she's a Garda. <laughs> oh, go ahead. And her fellow's a Garda. No, I, I like that neither of them admitted it, they say. <laughs> <sorry. laughs> any Garda? No, no, no. No, to be, to be fair, the context, the background on this story, we, on Monday when we recorded the pod, we were, afterwards we sat back and we said, right, have we got any stories that we can tell? Better take a drink. And, uh, <sighs> We, Seth and Will were like, oh yeah, that's a good one, we'll write that down, that's a good one. And Scale hadn't said anything, and next thing he goes, what's the Statue of Imitations? <laughs> I went, I said, why? I may have impersonated Garda in my life. And we're like, we just closed the notebook, I said, go on, tell us. <laughs> it's 10 years, by the way. It's we're over it, away. we're over it, yeah. Actually, 20 years. Is it? Yeah. Or sorry, it's 20 years since the incident. Oh yeah, then we're away. <laughs> yeah, so why basically, um, I suppose, I'm from Capitagal, right, which is East Galway, not a lot to do, okay, so you <laughs> kind of find your own. <laughs> I'm making up excuses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to find your own activity. So I said to myself, uh, a couple of my friends were there, let's go to the top of our road. It's only kind of 100 meters long. Let's just, you know, let's just egg a few cars, right? So we had six Casually. eggs. Casually, let's just Casually. egg a few yeah. Yeah. So we had six eggs, so that lasted all of <laughs> three minutes, okay? So we went back down, <laughs> and I think of another idea. So there was like a high-vis jumper jacket there, and for some reason, my dad, God rest him, had a hat, a bit, kind of like a Garda hat, looked like a Garda hat. So I said, you know what, I'll fuck them on and let's go out and stop if who cares. <laughs> so I went up to the top of the road, and I had a flashlight, and I would just kind of flag a car down, <laughs> put her in the window and say, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> and then put it, back, put it over his eyes, he couldn't see me, had you much to drink, and then put it back. So this went on for probably half an hour. We probably stopped six or seven cars. And everyone, everyone played along, because they all knew it was a big joke. <laughs> so everyone, everyone played along. But my friend, who will rename Nameless, right? Uh, he's quite witty, but he said, you know what, this is, I'm getting bored of this. Let's change it up. Let's, I lie on the ground, right? And you pretend you're kicking the shit out of me. <laughs> right? And the next car comes up. Let's just see what it'll do. Sounds right. So next thing, I'm there kicking the shit out of him. You know, waiting for it to come as, and I've put the light on him. And we see the car come up the hill. And next thing, as it gets really close, like, like literally front row close, we discover it's a Garda car. <laughs> right? <laughs> so this is not to be recorded. The Garda car comes. And let's, <laughs> not let's to just, be recorded. <laughs> Let's just, say, all being recorded. <laughs> Let's just say the Garda car clips me and I go over the Garda car, right? And uh, I lose my shoe. So we just took off running. And I mean, when we stayed running like Forrest Gump, we ran for five kilometers to the next parish, okay? So that was fine. I rang my mother, you know, as you do, mammy's boy, distressed. <laughs> she comes and collects us. I don't tell her the truth. Then I tell her the truth, right? Then the next day, it's on Galway Bay. There's four adult males trying to hijack cars in Capitagal. <laughs> right? That's a Sunday. Man yeah. rings me. We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I'm in school Monday morning. And uh, bear in mind, I'm 15 years of age. And I was in a classroom whereby you look out the window and you can see all the cars coming in. And I just saw a guard of car coming in. And I felt my heart beating. And I turned to my friend and goes, I'm finished, lads. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I said it over the intercom, I said, well, James Cahill, please come to the principal's office. <laughs> and Michael Bond, who was the manager of Offaly in 98, Really good guy. He was the principal. I walked into the, the uh, office. The guard didn't even say hello. He just point, puts up the shoe. Is this yours? <laughs> and it was a size fucking 13 Nike. Just <laughs> like, who's going to have that? And I said it was, yeah. But long story short, anyway, uh, let's just say I was questioned. <laughs> and there was kind of, let's agree to disagree. So it didn't follow me around. All, all's well that ended well. 
And uh, I'm, here, I'm here to tell the tale. So thanks, ma'am, for bailing me out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she's an accomplice. I think that's the first of three stories we have a brush to the law with you. Oh. There's more to come. Loads. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Unfortunately, and like even so, ma'am, like I, I tormented her from like 15, 16, 17. So I have two daughters. Yeah. And like I have a third on the way. So when we got the scan done, I rang my mother and I said, uh, "It's not the girl." <laughs> like, and she goes, "No, that's what you get. That's, that's what you get for being a bastard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paul Murphy, I reckon your story is going to be slightly more wholesome than them. A little bit more, yeah. Um, yeah. I believe a minibus of people from your home area have come up. There's about 14 lads, or 15 lads from the end sport there, yeah. One only got a smartphone about two months ago. <laughs> so that's the kind of calibre of man you're dealing with there now. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Mylan, I don't want to name him, but ah, there he is, he's the hands up and all. <laughs> he actually, he used to send lads around the country on the buy and sell and different things, trying to find 3210s. Wouldn't buy a smartphone, so him coming to Dublin now is a... Uh, Mind-blowing experience, yeah. at least, yeah. <laughs> um, your own club mate, then, yeah. of Dainsport and Richie Hogan, is potentially going to win an eighth All-Ireland medal on Sunday. Mm. Uh, that does include, like, his 15 All-Ireland handball medals and his world handball and everything as well. He's, like, the most glittering and crazy CV you could ever have. But it seems he's not a very good guy to look after things at home. No, we were going over it. I was thinking when we were trashing out a few stories, I was like, who has good stories? And, like, Richie, Richie is, like, you know is all about you know, his work and you know, education, his every, whole life squared away, but then just makes a hames of other things altogether. Now, I rang Paddy as well before, it's like, Paddy, is it all right to say this one, actually, because it doesn't, it doesn't come across great for Richie. But uh, <laughs> then I was like, grand, a story about it. Then, <laughs> then he said his story, I was like, oh, it's fine then, after that. <laughs> but uh, no, Paris Richie, here. Richie, a few years ago, his parents went to Australia, Richie's sister's in Australia, so they went to Australia and said, Richie, look, will you just mind the house and look after the place and you know, keep the lights on and all that? So Richie was like, grand. And, they had Labrador at the time. I don't know if they probably still do, but uh, they mightn't have it after this story. But <laughs> Richie was minding, minding the house anyway, watching the telly. Um, little did he know, the dog was after getting out of the pen, heading down the road, and got into the local Aldi and started hauling loaves of bread off the shelf. <laughs> Richie was inside anyway, watching telly, like just not minding the house at all. And uh, so the, the dog was causing such consternation in Aldi, someone locally took a picture of the dog put it up on the local community notes on Facebook and said, does anybody know this dog? It's destroying Aldi. <laughs> so Richie didn't figure it out. Richie didn't notice the dog was missing. Next thing, his mom in Australia, Liz, <laughs> was onto the community notes, sees that here is the dog in Aldi. Does anybody own this? Rings Richie. And Richie's like, yes, there's Liz ringing me. Well, Liz, how's it going? Liz goes, the fucking dog is in Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> And Richie's like, what? And next thing, sure, he went on, picture to get, had to go up, pay about 40 euro worth of bread off the <laughs> oak. <laughs> I was like, that's really just, that's the calibre of man you're dealing with. So you might see him on Sunday, you might think, incredible hurler, shite at minding dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Skellig, one more story I wanted to slip in before Joe Cannon comes on stage, and because it connects both of you. So Gerald Knan becomes Galway manager. You're a very young goalkeeper at that stage, getting in on the panel. Mm -hmm. You meet... Your now wife. Yeah. You go on a night out, and look now on his training plan for the next oh, day. The first meeting. Well, yeah. So I met Grace. Uh, this is 2007. I'm 19, young and dumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had a great home night, and yeah, I like her. So <laughs> I was only I was only going out for a pint or two, but because she was there, I had to keep I had to keep at it. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> keep this and pays off. Yeah, I keep at it. <laughs> I had to keep keep. I was going to say keep plowing, but I had to keep. <laughs> 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 keep crafting, keep crafting, you know what I mean? So that was fine. Uh, I woke up the following morning, training was at nine o'clock. This is about quarter past nine. So it was in Athen Rye, which is about 20 minutes from home. And I said, fuck, like, I'm, I'm in deep shit here. Jail was still in the hair. Jail was the thing back then, still. Mm -hmm. And I hop in the car, fly it down the road, and I get outside Athen Rye, and I'm thinking, what's my excuse? Because I, I wasn't going to tell the truth. So I put my hands on the tires, and I rubbed the tires, and I said, this is definitely it now. He'll, he'll, he'll actually feel sympathy for me. So I went in and I ran in, <gasps> sorry, your fucking flat tire. And he goes, oh yeah, yeah, show me the tire. <laughs> I said, fuck. <laughs> he said, get in there. He said, <laughs> so that's how I first met my wife, yeah. She's to blame. We can get all the unconventional Sherlock Nan stories out. Time for us to bring out the 2017 Hurler of the Year, All-Ireland winner with both Pertumna and Galway. It is the great Joe Canning.
Oh, well. Oh, you jolly well. How are you? Good man. Oh, you jolly How are you? You know, the great part about this segment, we'll talk about Joe's career, we'll talk about the final, we'll talk about Harlan. That's all going to be good. Well, actually, I rang Joe earlier, he went, I have got three hours of stories on Skell. So I was like, <laughs> so this is going to be good. <laughs> Skell, this was your only concern when we booked Joe for this show. So you know, he says to me behind the stairs, this lad, he goes, you're nervous. I said, I'm not. He said, it's you. I, was, I said, it's you. I'm nervous about it. <laughs> because I, and I, I will admit, right, I rang the country today trying to get a story on him, and he's dangerously clean. I'd all, <laughs> I'd all the boys told, don't answer whatever you do. And then I walked into a pub earlier on, right, down the road. And one of your, <laughs> what were you at last Saturday night? <laughs> it was his baby, it was your baby shower. No, it and wasn't. you went out. My and where'd you end up? My brother-in-law had a, we were wetting the baby's head for my brother-in-law's child. Yeah. <laughs> and so my sister-in-law was with us. And you know the way you haven't got enough, like, drink? <laughs> Three. I rang one of the lads there, David Dillon, has the pub in Lockery, so mm. I rang him like ten times. Half one. Yeah. We were in Killarney on a stag, and he rings me as well. Yeah, because it was the smart thing to do at the time. <laughs> you know? And then I ring him, and none of them answered, you know what I mean? But I found a drink, so... <laughs> Where did the taxi driver bring it? How do you know that? <laughs> For fuck's sake! I mean, like... So anyways... I do you know where he ran for five kilometres from the guards? He ended up in the same parish the same yeah, night. <laughs> I told the guard, he looked, he looked Irish, the guard looked, or not the guard, sorry. Yeah. The taxi man looked Irish. So I said, when, you, when I get to Capitagal, I have a habit of falling asleep when I have alcohol in me, so just make sure you wake me in Capitagal. Mm. And I woke up and it was not Capitagal. <laughs> right. I was like, this is fucking... I said, turn around, like, and he was cursing and blinding. But anyways, I was in the next parish. But I got home. So, again, all's well. Um, How do you know that? <laughs> I know a lot. I told two people that. Yep. He knows one. one I told him. He knows one. Yeah. <laughs> so, on local geography, do you want to tell people where you got sick after the road show last year? Is, is, this, is this my show? Or <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I got up early for work. All right, I have to tell it. I think I was in good shape. I ate the breakfast. I took off driving. I had to go on a Zoom call on the, while I'm on, in the car. Act sober. I got as far as St. Thomas's Pitch and I just puked my ring up. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't do it. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Well, just thought I'd get it out there. Seems <laughs> to just fit in nice. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Um, how are you keeping, Joe? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Not I'm, too bad. I'm all ready for the roast on this one. Um, we are going to look at some of your best moments a little bit later on. You can, we'll let the audience decide on those ones. But what's Gehel like to work with, given that you've been on the minor management this year with Galway? <sighs> Very composed. Um, <laughs> No, he's, he's he, in fairness to him, right? He's a lot different than what he used to be on the pitch. He's uh, he's a way different. He's way more. He is composed when he's with when he with the guys, like especially with the goalies and stuff like that. He's actually really good. Like we only brought him in as a goalkeeping coach last year, and then we had to bump him up into selector because he was given out. Um, <laughs> no, because we didn't win the Ireland. <laughs> we didn't win it this year either. Uh, so. He, he's really good that way, but th the first time I ever met James, it was actually a football game in Portumna. And now, <laughs> Patricia will remember this as well. Do you remember this? So we had an under 12 football. We were playing, it was the same, you're St. Gabriel's, are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's the same size now as he was at under 12, right? <laughs> so. We don't play football anymore, or give it up under 16 or whatever, but we were playing this match in Bertumna, and James was on this lad from, from our club, and he was running around, uh, and James couldn't catch him. And there was a bit of a row during the match, and after the match, I think we won the match by a point or something, but you actually had to hold him back from going into the, our dressing room to bait you, man, <laughs> at under 12. Do you remember that? I lose you, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Every <laughs> Jeez. Because Under 12, every, every time I see you, you tell me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, imagine, like, <laughs> under 12 match, like, coming into the dressing room to go bait a lad after. Yeah, but he wasn't very sportsmanlike. But, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, no, there's a, like, we grew up together then the whole way going up, like, so we would have known each other from probably that day until, until obviously now, but, um, yeah, we would have played under 14, 16, minor, 20, senior. Um, but yeah, I didn't go in that year with, when Skell was running around the paddocks with Lucknan. I was at home 
It was hard work, man. <laughs> he used to come home and eat a few Jaffa cakes. We were, we'd be eating Chineses and drinking pints and stuff like that. A patch of pizza, remember? A patch of pizza, yeah. 061 209 888. We were living together in Limerick in college. James had come in. I'd say he lost, you must lost four stone in a week running with Lucknan that time. Jeez, he was just drained off him. He, he could only eat Jaffa cakes. Yeah, he's a man there with the chicken tenders. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Still didn't start. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing that means you got to miss out on the baseball machines then? I did. I missed that year, yeah. You may and, pick the sand, and the tra sand track. You may pick that story up, Scal. The baseball machines, I suppose when, I suppose, like, oh, we, we weren't in a good spot at the time, like, senior-wise. No. Yeah, I know we, we were in the final in 05, but you know, we were well beaten. Like, so mm. when Luke Nang came in, it was kind of like, this is the Messiah. He's going to, because only 10 years previous, he'd won with Clare. And we're thinking this is this is going to be the answer. So in in his ingenuity, he brings in these baseball machines. You know the oaks that spit out the balls, like like, -dum, like, like that's the way it was. <laughs> that that sound effect, right? <laughs> but, so like we thought this is this is this is going to work. So anyways, Louis McQueen from Clare sets up the ba baseball machine at centre field, and we can see him when we're warming up, and he's he's testing it out like in the air, you know, and he's mm. -dum, -dum, like, and they're going fucking way up, like, right? And so he says, right lads, look down your score, right guys. Right back. Right back. It's 21 yard line. So we used to have, he's got, he said, uh, we're going to get Louis to, throw, to fire in the baseball and you're going to catch it and then turn and shoot. So Eugene Clunan was, was, uh, was first up, like trying to make an impression, obviously. And Louis McQueen obviously set it a bit high. So he just, boom, and Clunan shoots out and it just hits his hand. Boom. And he just turns around like this. That. <laughs> and every lad just starts backing up, like, <laughs> like no, no, no. And then we're doing shooting practice, and Colin Cannon was in goals, and uh, Colin, this time no helmets now, obviously. He says to Louis on 21, uh, right, or Sean Tracy, excuse me, whenever you're ready. And Sean goes, Colin, the ball's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, fuck it, he said. Just, it, was so, it was so fast, but it, that was just one of the things we did with Luckland back in the day that we thought, like we hung our hat on, this is definitely going to work, but it didn't. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> yeah, there was some there was some stories back then. Do you remember the day we played Cork the following year, and we played a challenge match down in uh, down in Cork? No, we played a, a kind of a fifteen on fifteen down in Turles the week before, and uh, yes, yes. it was the last game before obviously picking the team for the Cork match the following week. So down we went down here, and Alan Kearns was playing, and Andy Carey absolutely nailed him coming in, knocked him out like. So Kearns was there in the ground going. What, where am I like? Play on, match continued. They had to nearly drag him off to the sideline. And there was no freeze or anything. Look, Nan was refereeing and he roars out to the field. It was a lovely sunny day and he roars out. Curtains, what are you at? Sunning yourself, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Curtains is like, what, what? <laughs> and Ke Carey got on the panel. Do you remember picking the, the team the following day, so or the following weekend, like a Friday night, let's say. Yeah. He was picking the team, and he was had the chalkboard out, and he kind of one, three, six, and he'd look around. <laughs> I'm not joking. He'd look around to us behind him, and he picked maybe 10, 11, 12, and then he'd go, he'd look around, and he'd pick like two back to four. <laughs> and we were kind of looking, does he know the team, or is he just like kind of looking? <laughs> but then he says, and he was picking the panel, and he says to Kerry, he says, Kerry, after last weekend, you'd mark ring if he was out there. <laughs> and, and Andy was kind of going, I would, I would. <laughs> uh, All the while, Alan Kearns ends up in Nina Hospital. <laughs> That's not like it. No, he did the fitness test story. He played, actually, the following weekend, yeah. But we, like, we have a thousand of those stories. I don't think we have enough time, to be honest. Ah, I think we can free flow, see how many we get through. Or if I can just sit here and... God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two lads shut away. Yeah. No great panic, is there? Not at all, no. Yeah. no. We have Tommy in a while anyway, so I'm sure he's a few. He's a few. <laughs> what did you think of Joe when he was coming in, Skell? Given that, I know, Joe, you've said before that 212 against Cork was nearly the worst thing that could happen at senior level because almost puts a bullseye on you straight away. And people would have been familiar with how good you were as a teenager with Pertumna as well. So that expectation was there through the minors as well. Did you know there was kind of hot shit coming through Scale when he came in? You see, I, the first time I saw him, let's say, from a hurling perspective, was at kind of the Pugfather skills when we were 12. Mm. So, like, I, I had known him all the long as minor. So, he was coming into the senior panel at, uh, was he 19, Joe? 18, Nin turn 19. 19, yeah. And, like, so I knew all about him. You know, like, that he was just, he was awesome. I still, he's the best underage hurler that's ever lived. And in my opinion, he's the best senior hurler that's ever lived. So, he carried his underage form right up to senior. So, I knew exactly what it was about. But some lads had seen him on television. 
whether it be minor games or the, the, the bits of snippets, the bits of club games. So they didn't quite, quite get a, I suppose, an up close look at him at training. So when he came in, the likes of my club mate, Jace, you know, and Shane Cabs and these lads saw him and go, jeez, this guy is ridiculous. Thanks. I actually lost. Thanks, James. I actually, <laughs> I actually lost 50 euro in one day. Fucking prick. Like, we were, tra <laughs> we're training one day, right? And I, we're at centre field, I think it was from one train, Joe. And I said, uh, 50 euro, you won't hit the crossbar. And he goes, 50? Yeah, sound. Ping. Crossbar. <laughs> He, he took it too. <laughs> <laughs> How much money have you lost, Gal, to teammates over the years? Because you told the story this week as well. You lost 100 quid not remembering where you were in 2017 after the final. Yeah. And like, the hotel, yeah. I'm a bit bullish at times. Like, and so when I think I'm right, I argue that the cows come home. So it was after one of the minor games and we stopped off for a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. Right? And we're talking about hotels and whatnot. And next thing, um, someone asked, where did you stay in 17? And I said, uh, oh, it was the Burlington. And now Healy goes, no, it wasn't. It was the City West. I said, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> right? It was the Burlington. And he goes, I swear. I said, 100 euro. And, this, and he went, yeah. And this, on the phone to Aiden Hart, where do we stay? City West. I went, bollocks. <laughs> so, 100 euro gone, straight away. Some man to do his research, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, come here, you didn't I, have the notepad that day. <laughs> so, you <were> like, <laughs> <laughs> so you do listen to the show. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I actually, I actually look at the live ones and wonder why you don't have any um, subtitles. Oh! We always used to say that James could only get interviewed on TG Cahar because they'd have subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people talk about his accuracy. I'll tell you one more about this lad. I think it was under tw 21 again. And like I, to this day, I think it was on purpose. But we were t practicing 21s, and at the time it was, it was uh, three in the goal. Remember? And so he hit me in the kneecap with a bullet. And like, I was like, oh, Jesus. So I went out with the goal, and before, like, you know, it was probably three or four minutes. Then I came back in again, straight at the balls. <laughs> right? And I crawled at the corner flag. Like, I, I don't know what I did to you that time, but. I, I don't remember that. So he's dead. He was in Kiltormer. He was deadly accurate. <laughs> I, I remember. Kiltormer. And the boys Jeez. remember too. <laughs> so, Jesus, yeah. so he was deadly accurate, yeah. You see, Murph, I think at the moment we're kind of roasting scales slightly, and we're kind of being nice to our special guest. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a chance to actually reassure canning a little bit more as well. Because we chatted about this in the pod way back when, probably one of the times he wasn't watching the live. Mm. And it was just after Joe had done a piece with Off the Ball talking about how the comments had kind of been misinterpreted about Henry and this was fire for the Kikenny panel. Yeah. You and Tommy are here. How much were the comments actually talked about? I don't think they were talked about a whole lot, to be honest. Um, like, we, we kind of took it two ways, to be honest. Um, one was either he, they're, they're trying to throw us off by, by saying it, or the second is that a journalist misquoted him. Because like we've had years where you, know, you said something, but it was taken out of context. So we were saying, look, either way, it's, it's bad to go and believe it. Like. So we didn't have it pinned up in the dressing room or anything like that. And to be honest, at the time, my memory of it was actually thinking, that doesn't sound like something you'd say during a match, like, you know, or something like this. So we were like, well, if you did say it, it, it just doesn't sound like Joe. So I don't think, now Tommy might have a different memory of it, but I don't remember at the time us, like, we weren't ones for pinning stuff off in the dressing room anyway. Like, but, um, did Cody give a crap what was written about you? Um, I don't. I used to, look, he used to tell us not to read the papers and stuff like that, and whether lads did or lads didn't, I don't know. But I know Tommy will actually fill you in the story. Whoever it was a few years ago, uh, Brian said, like, you know, not about reading papers and don't read the papers and don't read all this. But we had some elder statesmen a good few years ago anyway, and Tommy definitely knows who it is now, but made a point of sitting up the front of the bus about three seats behind Cody and opened up the independent <laughs> 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 going to a match. So it was basically a kind of a, you won't tell me what to do kind of a situation. But uh, I, look, I'm sure he was aware of it. Like, I mean, it's, it's actually impossible. Like, the Limerick lads and the Kenny lads are going around this week and they know stuff is being said. So even if you don't read a paper, like, social media is the biggest thing now. So... Look, it's very hard. And like, even if we weren't reading papers, people would tell us if Joe, you know, what do you think of what Joe said in 2012? <coughs> but like, look, realistically, we might have had a bit of siege mentality at the time and maybe tried to use it, but I don't remember using it. Did you read much, Joe, about what was written about you while you were playing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. used everything. Used everything, yeah. It was, it's, a, it's a weird way for me, whatever way it was, that it worked in some ways good, some ways bad or whatever. But whenever there was something, let's say, questioned about me personally or about the team or anything like that, yeah, I would have I would have used that a hundred percent. Like um do you remember going back when like look Nan called Dunne Who Father Trendy? Yeah. That was awful funny actually really. Kind <laughs> <laughs> it all like we all we'd, we'd still call Dunne Who Father Trendy the other time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't actually know what the He time. didn't actually know who it was, <laughs> he was on one. Uh 
done the picture of him kicking Bishop Brennan up the arse. Do you remember that? Do you ever remember that photo? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We put yeah. Dunne who's heading it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like stuff like that, like even more so at home, like when, when like people from Galway question, like the Connacht Tribune or whatever yeah. it was, like that you'd read on a Thursday evening when it came out. Um, not real, like y you would have used as much as possible. Um, and it was probably like sometimes stupid, sometimes naive and probably putting your focus on the wrong thing or whatever. But um, yeah, I would have used it a lot, like yeah, personally anyway, yeah. Mm. Not for you, Murph, no? Uh, no, like I tried to stay away from it as much as I could. Um, but like that, exactly what Joe was saying, actually, sometimes you kind of wanted to read the bad stuff. You know, maybe if you had a bad day, talking about the Leinster final in 2012, let's say at the hands of the boys or something, maybe sometimes it was good to have a quick little read and see what the story is like, but it's getting away with do you, know, do you know, do you know in the comedy there's some lad like leaving? Where, where are you? Yeah, going? yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> just a lad in the middle there and he just left. Just slowly home. got up. We'll get him back, don't go. worry. Where is he after I think going? he's actually in the Connor kind of Tribune, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's John McIntyre. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the very, geez, snowflakes, aren't they? <laughs> um, Scale, I'm going to assume you read quite a bit of what was said. I, the guy, uh, I suppose, what was in the media and what was said. Uh, social media wouldn't really bother me. What bothered me is um, people close to home. So if my family says something like you were, you were shit, or hmm. which they didn't, by the way, sorry, but if they kind of insinuated I was, or people at the club, that would kind of cut me a bit more. But I wouldn't give a crap of what anyone said nationally. Because <coughs> I, I used to think he was irrelevant. You know what I mean? Hmm. Some, some people are different. Like, he'd use it. I didn't bother with it. Maybe he used use it as well. It's just, it's like, because you're too focused on your own kind of, I suppose, uh, training, nutrition, diet, sleep, all that, your kind of your, your methodics, so everything else is just external. Right? Look, it's very rare that someone will actually write something and like if it's very good, the chance is the feet might come off the ground and if it's very bad for some lads, they might just kill their confidence. So it's very, it's very rare that something's written about a player that just hits the middle ground where it keeps them in the right place. Because like, the danger is for some players, feet come off the ground when they're hurling well, they start hurling poor. Or then if a fella's confidence is a bit down, and you get slated in the paper. Like it's, it, it is tough on players, so striking that balance is we the thing. We used to give Skell the world of abuse anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the time we... <laughs> oh yeah, everything. Do you remember, Do you remember the time? The time? <laughs> <laughs> we played Dublin in our last round robin game in 18, and you went, it was a sunny day again, and you went out to a ball, out, big catch, just to the side, like around the six hour box, just to the side. Completely missed it. So it was the last game of the round robin, so we were going out and go with that night next Johnny Glynn, was it? Me and Johnny Glynn and Derby and the boys. Okay. It's not entirely accurate. What? Right? I didn't go with my hand. The ball frightened me when it hit the ground on <laughs> the table. Because okay? <laughs> I was expected to come this way, and next thing it hit there, and I went, oh, Jesus, <laughs> over here. I lost it in the sun. Sure. So Johnny comes into the bar that night with a pair of sunglasses. For <laughs> where <laughs> <laughs> going to give them to scale. You could see a man across the bar, absolutely, like, Steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> we were like, we better stay over at this side, boys. <laughs> yeah, but he'd, he'd, he'd give a shout in, hey, Scott, and he did this with the sunglasses. He'd hit the back, <laughs> and they start bouncing. It was the one time I wanted to physically assault him. <laughs> <laughs> Might happen yet. So, you know, we've done too many episodes in this pod this year when you realize Johnny Glenn feels about five years ago now when you mm. picked him as the best full forward to play against Limerick. Yeah, I stand by playing it. football for New York for the last. I stand by it, yeah. He's exactly, yeah. He was home last weekend. You tried to convince him to stay around. Yeah, yeah. He's still in some shape, too. Mm. He, he, was, he was midfield for New York footballers, so oh, he'd be fit enough anyway. Or sure, he's a wrecking ball as well. Like. That's precisely what you need against Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not denying that, but Joe, I'm not sure if you'd be bringing Glenn out right now to play against Limerick. This, the idea of this was, Skehel was picking a team from everyone in the country to play against Limerick at the time when they were beating teams by 10 points in the league earlier this year. And of course, Skehel had to come out with Johnny Glenn. He's my number 14. Do a job. <laughs> Jeez, Murph, maybe maybe, 12, maybe yeah, 12 or that, but um, he'd do a job if you, you wouldn't be uh, grabbing many balls off Johnny Glenn. Now, oh. We had a tactic back in the day, like our, I suppose our tactics weren't very, um, <laughs> I suppose, I was going to say professional or extreme, but it was, it was just very complicated. Very complicated. It was just, fuck, long to Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> that was long to Johnny. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest he spread out. <laughs> <laughs> this all coming at a time when like the short puck out was essential and keeping possession. Nah, stick it down to Johnny. Long to Johnny, yeah. Around 15, yeah. yeah 15, around 16, yeah. 15, mm. 16, yeah. It was just like long to Johnny. 
Mm. Yeah. You could hear it going around the place. Like everybody, it wasn't as if we were like it was a s signal that nobody else knew. Like you could, <laughs> it might as well come out over the the telecom or whatever. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Big sign. <gasps> Paul Murphy, when it comes to praise for players and giving mm. out about players, who's the Kilkenny player you currently praise the most? Ah, oh, Jesus. I'm looking, for a, I'm looking for a name here, Paul. But it was it, it, like I didn't see it turning this early in the show. To be fair, Mikey Butler. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. Uh, it's at this right. moment, Scale, you should have no pad. You should be going number fifty-three. Now we ran through everything before the show. You didn't tell me about a siren that was going to no. come on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the girls. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> Oh, so, the guards again. Joe, tell us why Skell isn't allowed on the Iron Islands anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Wait, Islands, wait. Yeah. We were talking about Mikey Butler here. <laughs> That's done. Continue, 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 continue. That's done. That was a visual joke. The, the right. stage is yours. We had, a, we had a training camp back in, what, it was 2010. John McIntyre's time, Joe Connolly and the lads we had to go out to the Iron Islands in Ishmore get connected with the west of Ireland again, up to Dune Angus, train over there in the pitch. And then there was a big Cayley that night. And all the lads into the Cayley, drinking all night, you name it. Got back to the hotel. I don't know what you were drinking anyway, but <laughs> mattress thrown out the window, <laughs> hurls. Jay Skehill hurls. I think it was actually lads that fucked him out, right? And <laughs> it's the first time you <laughs> yeah. yeah. The boys in the room fucked out everything, right? But the guard came up the following morning. Jay Skehill came up to the hotel, caught your man, marched him up. We were leaving on the ferry going back into Galway. Never set foot in this island again. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he's left out a small bit there now. I think you're filling in the gap on yeah, your yeah. own story. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be sure nice. You may as well be hung for sheep as well, Lemus. The guard actually came to the hotel that night. Was that night? And he came up and he goes, who's Jay Skehill? And I went, that's me. And he goes, are these your hurls? I said, yeah. He said, you're coming with me. I said, why? He goes, you threw them over the balcony. I went, yeah, I threw my own fucking hurls over the balcony. <laughs> and I said, you wouldn't be half a smart in Roxborough, would you? <laughs> and he goes, tomorrow. So he went down and woke the management. And he said, that led us to go to Mass tomorrow morning. So, what? Yeah, Joe Connolly came on the, the, the bedroom door and oh he goes, James, you come with me. I had to sit up the front of Mass, all ask Wilga, hadn't a clue what they were saying, sweat out through me because of the drink, and then I was marched down with the guard. And he said, <laughs> Don't ever come back here again. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Mass. I had to go to Mass, yeah. Fucking yeah. Mass. Yeah. You strike me as the type of guy who's like, I don't really care what he said. Have you been back since? No, I haven't. Wow. Not I, allowed. I, when I'm told to do something, I do it. I was, out <laughs> there two, I was out there two weeks ago. He's definitely not allowed out there. Did you meet the guard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he asking for me? No. <laughs> well, if you want a bit of revenge, Skell, what happened to your underpants that was Joe's fault? Okay, that's a bad start now, Will, right? <laughs> 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 I, I'm happy with how I framed the question. Go on. No, he's, he's a good, like, I know, he, I suppose when he's talking in media and like, on the pitch, he comes across as quite a serious character, <laughs> but he's the greatest messer going. And I, went, I came out with the, I was in the shower and I, and I came out anyway and <laughs> yeah. they were all <laughs> chatting away. I remember now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I put on the jocks and put on the pants and next thing I went, fuck, that's burning, I said. And I said, jeez, that's awful. And I looked in and it was covered in Vicks vapor rub. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I said, who did that? And next thing, your man is looking in the corner, like, in the corner. And I said, it was you, you're dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no jocks. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but then I got him back years later. Go on. Do you remember we used to dye the hair? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, Joe, Joe loves hurling. I think he loves fashion. <laughs> and he loves his hair. Right? <laughs> so back in the time in college, we used to do the old tips. Yeah. The old mm. blonde tips. Oh, yeah. So he did mine. And uh, I did his. And so we used to have to put on the cap. Remember the old cap? That was the Fitzgibbon. We won, we won the Fitzgibbon, yeah. Yeah, this, this is the start of it now. Jeez. Was that the Fitzgibbon that a clown could have managed to success, was it? Well, he did. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 you teamed me up there now, so you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I fell for hook, line, and sinker. But anyways, we did the... He actually did. ran to the sideline and bear-hugged Fitzy after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squeezed the shite over. <laughs> <laughs> he's still cross. I'll probably he'll tell you a story why he's crossing me from his house. But the... Uh, anyways, the old tips didn't work out so well. And they were supposed to come out like bright blonde. 
Uh, mine didn't come out too bad, but yours, yours was out, grand. Mine yours came out ginger. Yeah, yeah. Yours came out ginger, and I never saw a man who was cool, calm, collected to panic so much. <laughs> he didn't want to go into default mode. Got yeah. different dye. He went all over his hair. He went brown or brown. Yeah, it was you shaved rain, it off. So I shaved it off. Yeah, yeah. shaved the whole thing off. And blame me. <laughs> 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 I didn't do it to myself. Like. <laughs> yeah, but you signed off in it. <laughs> So hold on, what was the reason about the hate in the house? You kind of dropped that in the middle there and... No, I can't say that. Right, okay. <laughs> That'll do. When you broke all the furniture. Why did you say it then? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Next. Right, let's put Murph, <laughs> put Murph under pressure for a minute. Well. You picked TJ over yeah. Canning earlier yeah. this year when you boys had a bit of a debate. Yeah. Let's well tell him why in front of him. <laughs> I, 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 I'd well agree with him. Oh. I'd agree with him, 100%. Ah, Jesus, that's boring. No, I would. <laughs> huh? But he is like. Is that to prove me wrong again? Stop. Stop. That's to, no, but it, it's. I actually wanted to go studs up on him in, there in now. In, now fair, he's... in fairness, like, TJ Reid is probably the best we've ever seen. Oh, shut up, Kenny. Man. No, but he is. <laughs> but he is. This is why he's so clean. This yeah, is how he's 30, getting he's 30, out. What he's doing now at 36 years of age or whenever he is, 36. You were backstage looking at clips of yourself there, going, shit, look at that in 2015. <laughs> Remember that? That's why it took us so long to come out here. You were saying, yeah. fucking, I said, was the best at sideline. He came so over to Morphin and goes, look at this sideline here. Remember that, 2015. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a four in one game. It was, was actually, that the line he was using, wasn't it? It was a four in one game. Yeah, I heard it in the game. elevator coming out, four in one game. I was like, why are you talking about four in one game? Four wides as well. Yeah. <laughs> he actually, in, in fairness, he nearly got me in trouble one year. Remember in, in Tullamore, we play a G in the drawn game. So we were up 14. by about 10 points in 14 and you came back, but you got the drawn point and you were literally on the 14 yard line at the sideline running away from goal. And I was coming after you, but like you kind of, the ball couldn't was bouncing. Me. Couldn't get you. I was afraid <laughs> to run into that wall and told him more. That was a problem. <laughs> but I was running after you, but uh, kind of part of it was that, like we were out on our feet, like, you know, at that stage of the match and you had us on the back foot. But your man took the shot anyway and I was closest to him. I'm sure, like, when you look back at the angle, like, there was no angle there and there was a bit of curl on the ball and went over. I'm sure Cody cornered me, like, a few nights later. <laughs> and he was like, why didn't you block him? And now I'd, I was thinking that myself, like, but, you know, I, was going, <laughs> I know I didn't have blocked him. kind of plan, bro. 70 yeah. minutes in and I'm gasping and Johnny Lynn's after holding out and dragging out here, like, yeah. you know. But I, did, I was looking at Brian, I was going to say, is it because I thought he wasn't going to fucking score? And I was like... <laughs> I can't say that. I was like, look, it, uh, the sun got in my eyes there, Brian. I couldn't see. <laughs> but I remember, I remember when he got it and he was turning away, celebrating, waving. I was going, oh, you're some bollocks. I was just going. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just. Yeah, but, but we rarely marked each other, to be fair. Like, we only kind of, it was only, in fairness, it was only like five or ten minutes here or there because you were yeah. usually 14 or centre forward or something like that or terrified yeah, of marking me. So, yeah. Never really. <laughs> like, yeah. No, yeah, rarely. So I don't have good things. Will we be nice to TJ and ask him to talk about why he thinks TJ is so good? TJ tell you he's good. I he, know he will, yeah. No, as in the TJ he, tell you he TJ is good. Canning was better than me. TJ no, so TJ was oh, sitting yeah. here, TJ go, I am the best player. So, <laughs> <laughs> or Canning's just backing himself out of it. I would know, in fairness, like you said it was Canning. Like, and, but I think a lot of it is, in fairness, is like, I would have seen TJ since, you know, since I'm 11, 12 or 14. And like, that does play a lot in terms of what you've seen. I only saw him playing against him or what he's done on telly, like, you know, so. But um, look, it's sure it's splitting hairs, really, like, you know, in fairness. I, mean, I know he's backing out of it there, but it is splitting hairs, like, to be fair to him. Hmm. No, I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, his longevity, Joe, is incredible. As you mentioned, he's 36 later this year. He's taken your record as the championship top scorer. Himself and Horgan are kind Fuck of swapping it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to see that one out, All didn't I you? got for that, like, yeah. <laughs> a Jesus. Week. A week. I think week, I had yeah. a week, did I? Yeah. Well, look, I'm sure it was sweet enough, though, to actually. Like, were you aware of the record as it was ticking down? Because most of the media weren't. It definitely was. Do you know, do you know what, now? <laughs> I'll tell you a good one, right? Yes, I was aware of it, right? But we played Waterford that day, hmm. and Bennett, who's the, the corner forward, what did I get mixed Shane up? Shane Bennett was Shane corner, but Bennett Stephen was, yeah. as well. Like. Uh, and I was taking a free, and I could hear him roaring up the field at me. You'll break your record today, you'll break the record today. And that's how, like, you know, that, so I did know, like, and everybody kind of knew about it at the time, but did it matter? No, like, hmm. like, what difference? As I said, like I didn't get anything for it. Like it doesn't really matter. Like, um, would you have liked it to been like doing the basketball when Steph Curry breaks the? Oh, like the whole like crowd. Henry on the comes field. down and yeah, hugs yeah, you and yeah, stuff yeah. like this. Like, and 
<laughs> half Take a time. 40 minute break. Yeah, yeah. There, John that's... Milan is carrying you off on your shoulders and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It would have been good crack in fairness. It's a missed opportunity, really. It really, really is. Yeah. You just get to pick yeah. a motley crew of players to go down and keep carry you off the pitch. Going, keep I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted it, though, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> not really. Like, it is what it is, like. Yeah. You know, mm. it's not. What difference is it? I'm sure, like, I probably got a point or two more or missed a point or two before. Do you know what I mean? Like, those kind of records are very iffy. Do you know, like some match reports, you could have 10 points, and another match report, you could have eight points, and you'd be like, fuck it, I got 11 points there today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's, so it's, yeah, it's a little bit different like that, yeah. But there's not enough appreciation for it, though. There's not. No. You know, I think sometimes it's because we're amateur sportsmen that there's not enough um, made out of it. Because like what to, to get that amount of scoring is is surreal, because it's it's continuous top level performance. Like I just I just think probably because we've we've seen him in the present, there's not enough appreciation, and the record will be broken at some stage, and it won't be appreciated then again. Mm. So it's just uh, I know he 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 play it down because that's his nature, but in fairness, to get to the top of that list, that's passed out some greats. So well done, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I also, Skell, shouldn't need to point this out, but the record was broken, like it's going to be broken so many more times now because of the round robin. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. When the lads in Joe's era broke it, for the best part, you got what, about two or three years of round robin tops? It was the weird COVID year in the middle of it as well, wasn't there? Yeah, like eight, what, 62 games? What's, uh, mm. what's the boys played now? The boys probably have 70 something games yeah. played. Like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have 9.2 points average. Oh, jeez. And the boys have below eight. And seven. That's why, that was my argument. The notebook's in your brain. It's in my brain. But I, I, <laughs> I, list, I listed out 10 or 11 items that he was better on. Or back to the TJ debate, sorry. <laughs> so I'm a man of numbers, but yeah. So he, but he there, will be, there will be more games, so mm. it's yeah. going to be broken eventually, like again. Um, but yeah. Did G2 fall out over the change of management in 15 into 16? Because you run opposite sides. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> really. It didn't really fall out, like. But there would have th at the time there would have been a little bit weird between let's say the five or six and in the whatever twenty five or whatever. Mm. There was a little bit like he like was at the time, but nothing major. Like it, it was a debate. Yeah, that's what it was. Like it wasn't which, which in fairness panels need, and like ultimately you go on and win yeah. the All Ireland a couple of years later, and then yeah. So like it was a debate, and obviously you have people who thought one thing, and you have people who thought the other thing. Yeah. So then ultimately it was kind of like I suppose a democratic decision. Mm. That's nobody, it. nobody ever fell out over it, no. like, because we were still the same panel the following year and stuff like that. Like, me all didn't change much, but it was just difference of opinion, I suppose, of how we saw things through, like, a collective more so than individual. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, so no, we never fell out or anything. Jeez, no, no. Mm. What did I know of? Do you follow me? No, man. No, oh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever find Skell here to take an awful lot of responsibility for your team? Put it that way. Um, because everyone is associated with Canning's Galway almost. So if you came up short, the analysis would be about Joe. Yeah, I suppose, um, like I've often stated publicly like that, we, we as teammates like would have let him down. He would have performed on a day and we wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I wouldn't have been conscious of it, but I'd say it's only when you're finishing you look back and go, geez, he actually did carry us for a good bit. And I suppose the supporting crew, if you want to call it that, wasn't as effective as it was when he got into 17, 18 and so on. Um, but I'd say he's, you're probably harder on yourself than we were on him, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there was a you kind know? of a bullshit perception out there from media and stuff like that. Like, it's different if you're playing individual sports and stuff like that. But when you're playing team sports, you need, like... Not by us, No, not, no. But that's what I'm saying. It, it was, like, supporters and stuff like that and the media. And it was, like, if things weren't going right, it was, like... Why aren't you in full forward and you could be out centre forward and then ball going in and oh, twice in full forward and shit like mm. people that don't actually has never played the game at a high level or has never been in that situation before like it's easy to give a perception to if people in influence let's say media and stuff like that can give a perception to the general public and then yeah that's it you know, and they can say stuff here and there, and rumours start then, and, like, I remember there was a rumour going around that me and Davy Burke didn't talk because of Pertumna and St. Thomas's, and we lived together for five years. <laughs> you know, that kind of way, like... It sounded sound like a very social house, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> How did you not talk for five years? And he kept to his side. <laughs> it was two floors in the house. But, um, 
But you know, that sort of stuff around Galway and stuff like that, there was always that sort of stuff. And then, like, club rivalry and stuff. Like, I don't think, like, I never came across that when they actually went into Galway. Like, mm. like it was part of, like, yeah. But, like, it's the same in Kilkenny, I'm sure. Like, mm. when you go play with your club, like, you'll, you'll kill each other to win for your club. Mm. But then when you're in with the county, it's just park, like, and you just get on with it, like. Do you know? So, um, yeah, and the same thing back then in 15 and stuff or, or anything like that. It was all a lot of wishy-washy stuff, like. Yeah. Um, before we look at some clips of you, because I'm sure that's what everyone wants. I can't, uh, yeah, if I was wondering when you were going to show yeah. them. <laughs> you know, you banging in those goals. That's the only reason I'm here. Earlier on. <laughs> Did you feel any pressure as kind of the years went on and got towards 17 and like you're going to kind of 30 years of age that you're kind of going to become <coughs> that story? Like it was only a couple of weeks ago on the radio we were having the argument. You're like, your brother Ollie, one of the best players never to win in All Ireland. We talk about Kieran McDonald. We talk about all the Waterford guys. Was it ever crossing your mind as you got to that point that you might think, I've achieved all this, I've got five All-Stars in the bag, but I might not actually get to lift Liam McCarthy? No, I, I, I never thought of it in, in a way that it would be a failure of my career if I never won All-Ireland. Hmm. To the general public, to every prick you meet in a pub that will say easy to you, Jesus, Never won All Ireland, do you know? That that's what worried me. Did many people actually come up and say it to you? Oh yeah, loads. Really? Of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> loads, of, loads of that sort of stuff. And and even oh, you've only won. That's <laughs> mm. <laughs> that was said to me in Killarney at the weekend there when we were at a stag like by a Limerick fella. <laughs> um, and how many? And I, live in, and I live in Limerick. How many All Irelands does he have, Joe? This guy? <laughs> None. Oh, there you go. Well, it was funny, he kept roaring over up the treaty, up the treaty for like 10 minutes. And then he saw Johnny Glenn and he quietened down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, I was never worried that kind of a way that, like, it didn't really matter. It wouldn't have defined me as like my career to myself or to my family or anything like that or to the lads. I don't know, James could be different because we grew up a lot. Like, James is the same as I have. Hmm. Like, you have Everton, I have. Bear, yeah. bear club, a hundred county titles and four <laughs> club of Ireland. No, but the, like the, the, the Everton the county, county wise, the, yes, the county yeah. wise, and Fitzgibbon and that, like so, um, like we've won Everton apart from under fourteen, Tony Forrestal, uh, Everton, like so. It was the All Ireland the thing? Yeah, in one sense that, geez, you'd love to win it, and it's Everton you grew up dreaming of doing. But in another sense, would I be in content? Um, retiring without one, I've I've always said I would have been. It didn't define because you need you need a group. You're either good enough, or you're not. Right? It's not as if it's a one uh, like a, you're playing tennis or you're playing golf, right? And you don't win your your biggest title or whatever. So in a group scenario, you're either good enough, or you're not. And we weren't good. Like we played in four, we weren't good enough in three of them, mm. which is a horrendous like statistic, really. Like. Um, so yeah, it, it's grand in one way that you can say you won one, but yeah, sure he's about. To we don't. Well, how many? <laughs> five or six? What, four. Oh, four. Is that all? Four. <laughs> Says your man giving out about lads. Oh, cheer him. I know a lot. Can any lads have more? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll hear from one of them after the break. Uh, before that, uh, just to mention as well that Joe has been a Borgosh Energy Ambassador since 2009. We are genuinely going to look at some of the clips that he was looking at in his phone. I think the guys at the back have managed to put them together. We're going to call these, go, um, let's say, moment A, moment B, moment C. Mm. Paul Murphy, you can judge them as we see them. So okay. let's have a look at the first clip. We've got a monitor there. Everyone else can see it up there. Which one's this? Oh, yeah. Oh, this one, yeah. Well, again, this is kind of one where I was like, now I'm actually a right bit away from here. That's Joey Holden, just in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> hangs it. Yeah. Ah, look, it's a great goal. Like, like he had a... He had Joey and Jackie within striking range of him, but like I've never seen anyone actually just catch, catch the ball, turn and strike without looking. So the boys weren't expecting it, as you can see. Like I wasn't yeah. expecting it. I actually looked for that ball in front. Like that was a horrendous <laughs> ball into a four. <laughs> it was a bit. <laughs> it is, but it is like. So Andy hit that ball like, and I was actually out in front. Next thing he launched it, <laughs> and you're like just you're just running like. Yeah. Basically, no credit to Andy Smith whatsoever. Uh, you made everything with it's the pirouette. Pure fluke. Hmm. Okay, that's A. We're going to let you pick at the end. We'll shout A, B, C at the end. Let's have a look at clip number B then. 
Number B. Well, letter B. <laughs> Murphy has to be a smart <laughs> Well, that's the point. This scale ah, in fairness, scale that won the game. Favorite, this is that the won the game. That's your favourite. <laughs> Talk us through that. What was it like, Scale? That was the job, wasn't it? Mm. Well, what were you feeling at that time? I don't know how Johnny Cohn turned around, like... Johnny oh, turned around to pop it back to you? Yeah. 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 Why did he, like, turn around? Because he, he definitely he wouldn't have heard me. But he'll tell you himself, though, he's shooting at times is questionable. At the time. <laughs> <laughs> at, at times it's questionable. Like, he wouldn't be the most accurate. Were you uh, fond of Tipperary at the time, Scale, or where were you at? No. Yeah, fucking hate you. She's a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, that's letter B. Let's have a look at letter C. Oh, he was there for that one now. Yeah, this is an earlier one. Well, this was one, look, he just ghosted in. You can see him here, look, snaking in behind everyone. <laughs> so the boys are getting flogged there. Who's that, Johnny Dinn or someone? No, it's James Regan. Regan. James Regan. Here he comes in. I get to him, and then he just changes direction. All of us gone, hangs it up. But it was just... The thing was, though, as well with that one, with, with the third one there, like, and it's not trying to blow him up or anything, like, one of the things you didn't want was that in the ninth or tenth minute, like, you didn't want him hitting the back of the net. It's like Tony Kelly last week, you're like, you don't want Tony Kelly hitting the back of the net because that'll get the, the player crowd going. Yeah. Well, so yeah. once he hit the crowd, like, the Galway crowd, like, if he got a point, it was kind of, were two points, really, because the crowd were up for it, like, but, geez, we were talking about it during the week there, about the roar of the crowd. And that was one of the goals where it was like, you could hear the Galway crowd, like, it was, you know, the shaking of the stand and everything. But uh, yeah, like at that stage, it was important for us to bounce back after that because they could really, and you got to run this in Leinster final, similar enough, Davy Burke, yourself, both got goals. So like, there was kind of a few hallmarks there of going, this could be dangerous again. Skell, you wanted to include D, but I couldn't get the clip because it was in such crap quality. It was the one against Cork where he bounces off the rock and puts it in. Yeah, it's his, it's, I think probably your, it was probably one of the biggest goals he scored at the time. It was his first year. So again, high ball in, terrible ball, but he catches it over the rock. Uh, I think he fins him off with an elbow, buries it past Cusack. The rock is... Where are you going, lads? <laughs> <laughs> They're from Cork, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> He's insulted the rock, I'm out here. <laughs> Again, young age, uh, 19 years of age, catch a ball over the rock, out muscle him and stick it in the net. It's, it's a fair feat. Not bad. A, B or C from the crowd? It's a lot of Bs. Few A's. B? A lot of B's, some A's there towards the end. A's have been shouting very loudly towards the end. More importantly, Joe Canning, which is your favourite of the three? B. Mm. <laughs> Significance of it, is that because like, it's obviously that clutch moment in a huge game? Is Skin, that why? Skin's tip. <laughs> <laughs> There's tip boys down there somewhere. Yeah. The tip boys were the ones walking out. There's tip lads there, definitely. Yeah. That's my boy. I, I should be worse than him. Like, I grew up on the border of Galway and Tipperary. But, um, what, like, no, I think just the significance right. of it and stuff like that, obviously. But then again, like, you go, if you play on that, like, 30 seconds later, like, Bubbles had a shot to draw it. Like, and it, like then you wouldn't be talking about it. or anything uh, like that. The editors cut it very cleverly. It looks like it was the last moment. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Next yeah, moment yeah. is you getting swarmed. But, uh, but, hold on, did Tipperary not have a lot to do? Like, again, 2009, Pertumna win the All-Ireland Club title. You trained in Tipperary all year that year with Pertumna. Which? In 2009, the All-Ireland Club. You beat Burr. Yeah. You and Burr were both training in Tipperary all that year. Ballingarry. Hmm. Sure, so Burr's 15 minutes, 20 minutes yeah. over the road from us. Um, yeah, we would have. I think it was all, the same, it was all the same night. Like, we no, went down one night, side, they were yeah. the other. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we would have trained. Because it was the only place that had lights around. Um, so yeah, we would have trained there for a lot of our club, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's gas, actually, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Me trying to bring Tip and Galway relations back together. Uh, more on Tipperary after the break. Everyone, Joe Canning's been a fantastic guest. Thank you. OTB's The Hurling Pod. With Board Gosh Energy. Proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship.